Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And you know, there's this massive interest on the internet, often trying to sell you stuff. How do I live longer? Aging, longevity. And I hear the Mayo Clinic is now starting a longevity clinic. It's not going to work very well because their metrics are wrong. But let's break down what the criteria are for aging and for longevity. And I'm going to quote two studies. The first study came out last year. It's called the Swedish Longevity Study. And it's a really cool study done in Sweden over the course of 35 years. So robust data. And they took a group of people and they tracked them for 35 years. That's all they did. And they looked at those that died under 90 years of age. So these are long longevity patients. So they looked at those that died under 90 versus those that looked lived over 100. So there's a 10-year gap if you died early, under 90, if you lived longer than 100. And they looked at specific criteria that were statistically significant. And this is crucial because in large part, the internet loves to sell us products that are going to make us live longer, longer than our own genetic capability. But what's probably far more important in terms of longevity is not living longer than you were supposed to live, but it's about not subtracting from how long you were supposed to live. What do I mean by this? Uh, Oh, if you take colostrum, you're going to live longer. Bullshit, you're not. You are not. You're going to make other people wealthy, but you are not going to live longer because you take colostrum or some peptide infusion that somebody sells you for $1,200 a shot or whatever it is. You're not going to live longer because of that crap. But for example, if you text while you're driving, you're going to potentially live a lot shorter. But if you don't text while you're driving, you're not going to live longer You're just not going to die earlier. So a large part of the focus of these studies, which and it was very obvious, is that none of the people that lived longer in the Swedish longevity study took a whole bunch of crap to make themselves live longer. What they did is they lived clean enough to not subtract from that. And these are the following criteria, and they really beg a big, big question about what we consider to be healthy in this country, particularly the medical infrastructure and medical system. So these are the statistically important things and then a few things that they did do. So remember, people that lived over 100 versus those that died younger. And the first two criteria are critical. Statistically significantly higher cholesterol and LDL levels in those that live longer. Think that one through, folks, in the context of this country, because in this country, every doctor out there is trying to lower your cholesterol and your LDL with medication. Well, the lower your LDL, the lower your cholesterol, with or without medication, the shorter you live, according to the Swedish Longevity Study. So a huge reason not to take a statin. The next correlate was a high level of HDL. And HDL gets produced by the liver when you're in a period of fasting each day. So if you're eating, snacking all the time and eating all the time and your insulin levels are high, your your HDL levels are low. HDL gets produced by the liver when you're burning fat and you've gone a period of time without eating. So fasting was a very important metric and HDL is the marker for that. So high HDL levels. And then when it comes to lipids, low VLDL and low triglycerides. Well, triglycerides are the conversion of excess sugar to fat by the liver. It's one of the ways the liver protects you. And if you're not producing a lot of triglycerides, it means you are not living on excess sugar, whether that sugar came from protein or carbohydrates. You know, folks, I use Ketone IQ uh, for a variety of different reasons, but Recently, Ketone IQ or HVMN, the company that produces it, has spent a lot of money uh, supporting funding for studies because, okay, this makes me feel better, but is there data, is there research to support this? And um, one of the big studies that they've just uh, released, and they were at the Boston Marathon, they support the Tour de France, is 
Do exogenous ketones boost athletic performance? I'm going to do a whole long talk on this, uh, discussing this from a performance perspective. But I can tell you, and you'll see in the show notes, you'll see the ad, uh, you'll see the study. In a placebo-controlled study with trained athletes, so these are fit folks, ketone IQ boosted average sprint power by 19%, peak power by 13%. So you got sprint power by 19%, peak power by 13% and cut fatigue by 10%, increasing the speed of recovery. And it also spiked blood ketones five times higher than normal in 20 minutes in fat adapted trained athletes. So there is strong evidence that ketone IQ does boost athletic performance in the short term. I've played around with this. I'm not a trained athlete. I am fat adapted ketosis. It works in my own life. If you're an athlete out there, do the experiment. So it's pretty obvious, but those are metrics that um, were low in those that lived long. Low triglycerides and VLDL is the um, lipoprotein that transports those triglycerides out to the cells. Low VLDL. Okay. And then the next set of obvious ones, low blood sugar, not low blood sugar, but normal blood sugar, a lower blood sugar statistically than those that died earlier, and a low hemoglobin A1C. Okay. These are the common metabolic numbers, but how often does your doctor ever check those numbers? So low blood sugar, low A1C, or normal A1C, normal glucose, and we're talking about 5.2 to 5.5, and blood sugars below in the US 95. Low creatinine. Creatinine is protein turnover, but creatinine is also kidney uh, kidney damage. And a low alkaline phosphatase, AST and ALT. Those are liver enzymes, and they speak to liver infections and and toxic waste uh, removal, but mostly they speak to metabolic health. And both alcohol and excessive carbohydrates raise AST and ALT. We call that alcoholic fatty liver and non-alcoholic fatty liver. So low ALP, low AST, and low ALT. Classically what we look for in a ketogenic diet. And then the final set of criteria are elevated iron or an adequate iron, not high iron, but a high normal range iron. Um, Low ferritin, which is a marker of organ strain and organ inflammation. And then the final one is a low uric acid, a low uric acid, which relates to fructose, high protein turnover, and high cellular turnover. So those are the blood work metrics that correlated with longevity versus those that died under 90 in the Swedish longevity study. And those are, every one of those are the things we try to attain without medication by a ketogenic or carnivore-based diet, okay? Now, three additional things that those that lived longer did. Number one, they didn't smoke or use nicotine products. Nicotine is is an independent variable on multiple levels for early death. So they didn't smoke, they didn't use nicotine. Secondly, and here's an interesting thing is, they did consume a higher amount of alcohol, mostly as wine and beer, than those who died early. But generally, alcohol consumption on a regular basis. Now, in Europe, the alcohol is much cleaner than it is here in the US. But alcohol, wine, beer, and some of the clean spirits. And then the final one is this. They were statistically much more mobile than those that died under 90. So physical activity, I don't use the word exercise, they don't go out and exercise, but they walk a lot, they do endurance work, they do some strength work, maybe chopping wood or whatever it was, and they worked on flexibility and balance. So mobility, daily, physical activity as part of their lives and independently, statistically higher. That's the data from the Swedish longevity study. So instead of spending your money on a whole bunch of potions and powders and stuff to live longer, Why don't you remove the things that are going to cause your life to be shorter? And those are very obvious without contaminating the fun we have in life. Now, the second study that I want to quote, and this just blew my mind when I saw the study. I believe it's Harvard. The the study will be in the show notes. uh, Published a study either earlier this year or late last year where they looked at 
which populations had the best health? The best health, which populations lived the longest? So they used longevity as their primary criteria. And they studied two populations. They studied Europe, and then they had a match cohort in America, in the United States. So they had a U.S. population, an American population, sorry, and a European population, and they looked at how long people lived for. They looked at longevity. And the criteria that they used was very simple, economic status. So they looked at those who were on a low economic status in both continents, a middle income level, and a high income level. Now, what would you have predicted? What would you predict? And the prediction then is whether the low level, the middle income level, or the high level lived the longest in each country or in each continent, and then what the differences were between the two continents. Well, the results were very, very cool, interesting, and pretty obvious on one side, and very startling on another. Remember that in the U.S., per capita, on every human being, we spend about three times more, three times more money on healthcare in the U.S. than they do in Europe. So we've got a massive spend disparity. And here are the results. First of all, as expected, as I would have predicted, the wealthiest people, both in Europe and in the U.S., live the longest. So the wealthiest live longer than the uh, middle-income people who lived longer than the poorest people. That's pretty obvious. That's an economic status. But here's what blew my mind. Here's what blew my mind. In America, if you looked at how long the wealthiest people lived, and you compared that to the three different tiers in Europe, the wealthiest people in the U.S. did not live as long as the poorest group in Europe. So the poorest people in Europe lived longer than the wealthiest people in the U.S. despite a threefold increase in healthcare spending. That just blew my mind. So I'm packing my bags and moving to Europe. No, I'm not, but I'm going to try to emulate some of those criteria, some of those characteristics of the Swedish longevity study and the Harvard long longitudinal longevity study in my own life as I practice it. And if you want to know what to do, if you want to look at your own parameters, give our practice a shout. We can work through that with you and give you guidance. 561-517-0642. This is longevity data. Don't waste your money on a bunch of potions, powders, and crap to live longer. Stop subtracting from your life by doing stupid things. 